Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us, and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sacrificed Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or in the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. We'll read it in unison. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is ready to Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From Ephesians. For once you are, excuse me, for once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. As he walked along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. 
Then he went and washed and came back and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jewish authorities did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid, and they had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple." but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my rock. Please be seated. I once was blind, but now I see. While growing up, 
I live next door to my grandparents and my great grandmother. At the end of her life, my great grandmother was visually impaired and could not see well. Several years ago, I too struggled with visual impairment. I was eventually diagnosed with a corneal disease and offered a corneal transplant. In order to have this procedure, the corneas were to be harvested from cadavers. So right now in my right eye, I have the cornea of a 66 year old female and in my left eye, I have the cornea of a 45 year old male. I am so thankful for their life and their generosity. I once was nearly blind, but now I see much better. After the transplants, I could see so many beautiful things, colors, patterns, lights, details. I could see my husband's beautiful eyes, my daughter's lovely face, but I could also see my wrinkles, dust in the corners, half clean floors. The clarity was both good and bad. I started to see more clearly. I became more aware. In our reading from John, we hear the familiar story of Jesus giving sight to a blind man. This story is told in all the synoptic gospels. In today's reading, we hear that as he walked along, Jesus saw a blind man. John does not explain why Jesus approached this particular man. In the Gospel of Matthew, we hear a different version. In Matthew, we hear that two blind men followed Jesus, crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David. But in today's Gospel, it seems as if Jesus chooses this particular man and heals him. This man is given the gift of sight, and not just visual acuity, but understanding. This man is offered the opportunity to see. Jesus heals the man of his blindness. And as the story goes, the man eventually recognizes that Jesus is the Lord. The man not only sees, but he understands. He not only sees light, he becomes light. We know that Jesus was a Jew and was born into a Jewish community. The Jews were under constant threat by the Roman powers. The Jews were a minority of the population. And then Jesus and his followers became a minority within the Jewish community because they challenged power and sought to speak the truth, Jesus and his followers became outcasts of their community. So when the blind man's healing is revealed to the Pharisees, the established Jewish authority, there were questions about what this means. The question that the authority often asks is, how does this new information affect me and those of us in power? The blind man's assertion that Jesus is the Messiah led to the Pharisees driving him out. The act of being drove out means that the Pharisees dismissed him from their sight. They did not want to see. Speaking truth and sharing light is not always welcomed. Jesus tells the healed man, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see may see. Our blind man from the gospel is physically healed and he can see light. And moreover, he goes on to be light, to share light, to speak the truth. He once was blind, but now he sees. After my surgery, I could see well, but sometimes the light was too bright. I was not used to seeing with such clarity. 
Sometimes I had to shade my eyes because the light was too bright. Jesus tells us, I am the light of the world. And in our reading from Ephesians, Paul tells the followers that they were once darkness, but now in the Lord, you are light. Live as children of the light. Just as Jesus was the light of the world, we become the light of the world. We were blind, but now we see. We are to be light and to illuminate. This gospel reading of the blind man receiving vision is the basis of our beloved hymn, Amazing Grace, written in 1772 by John Newton. At one time, Mr. Newton was the captain of a slave ship. For years, he worked transporting human beings. After a series of events and a spiritual conversion, Mr. Newton became enlightened. He became aware. After that, he could no longer participate in the buying and selling of human beings. Eventually, he turned from the slave trade, becoming an abolitionist and a minister. The words of amazing grace confirm and retell the story of the blind man. I once was blind, but now I see. So we seek to be light and to have clarity of vision. Of course, we want to see the truth and to speak the truth. Of course, we want to see the glory of the world, the beauty of nature. We want to see the abundance of our life in Christ. We want to see it and to appreciate it. Yet, we must also realize that with sight, we may see what is painful. We may see our own failures. Just as I saw the dust in my house, we may see what is uncomfortable or difficult. We may see how our behavior has harmed others. We may see our own half truths. Once we begin to see, we have to realize that we change. Once we see, we have to make decisions about how to progress. We can no longer pretend that we are blind. We can no longer rest in ignorance. Once we see, the options may look something like, mm, actually, I prefer blindness, or I will accept that I feel uncomfortable and I will make a change. As you know, many of us have been involved in it, have been involved in a training called Sacred Ground. This training has helped us to see how our actions or lack of actions have affected others. While of course, we as a dominant culture have brought much good to the world. We as a dominant culture have created harm. Sacred ground is an attempt to first see and then to change. Can we accept and welcome our sight and not be overwhelmed with the light and the struggles that are illuminated? Can we look at how we have done things that have harmed others? Can we see that harm has been done that benefits us? Can we challenge the status quo in order to bring light to those in need? Like the blind man who received his sight, can we see and be aware? Like Mr. Newton, can we accept our shortcomings and turn ourselves around so that we can be a source of good? Can we begin to see ourselves complete with our strengths and our weaknesses, our flaws and our imperfections? Can we begin to see those close to us? Can we sit with them? and allow them to be vulnerable and safe with us? And can we attempt to see those whom we do not like, do not understand, 
do not associate with? Can we allow the light that we seek, the light that we are, to illuminate our part in conflicts and problems? Yes, sometimes the light is just too bright. Sometimes it is hard to bear the truth. But let's not be afraid of the truth. The truth will not hurt us. We are strong enough to see the truth. The harm comes when we choose to maintain our blindness, to pretend that we know best, to avoid knowledge, to act like the Pharisees and to drive the truth out. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Amen. Stand as we affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten and made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Michael and Pat, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask for your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask prayers for Jim Scarborough, who's undergoing surgery, and Kathy, his wife.
I ask for your thanksgiving for Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We did. That's just fine. Yeah. 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 Peace of the Lord. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You as well. Thank you. Peace. 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 Yeah. Thank you, Remy. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. What? I knew you could relate that. <laughs> There we go. Right? He's with you. I didn't hear you. He's been with you. Oh, it work. Yeah. So, 
Yes, I am, and good to be home. Hey girls, peace with you, Peppa. I don't. Yeah, oh, okay, I was saying. Well, wherever they are. <laughs> All right, announcement time. Let me just start with this next week. We have something very exciting going on on Friday. And Pam, would you like to take a moment? So as you know, Friday, um, I will be ordained to be a deacon. So. Um, so it makes me cry. I mean, everything makes me cry. Um, so practice at four o'clock if you're in the if you're in the um, service, and five o'clock we will have the ordination, and then dinner afterwards downstairs. When you all please come. And echoing Pam's words in that, if you're part of the service, please do show up to the rehearsal at four o'clock. It's always helpful. <laughs> so. Um, as you heard, um, Jim Scarborough is undergoing surgery right now, so please keep him in your prayers and then call call the family when you can. That's always helpful, and we want to make sure them know how supported they are. Other than that, what other announcements are there for the community? Oh, actually, sorry, one more before you. This is also, we're piggybacking Pam's ordination on the bishop's visit. So the bishop will be here on Friday, then there's an all-day event for people involved in Curcio on Saturday, and then on Sunday, Bishop Pat will be here. So there isn't going to be an 8 a.m. service. We're trying to get everyone to come so that the bishop can meet everyone. So next week at 10 o'clock, Bishop Pat will be here and celebrate. So we'll be very excited to see him there. Other announcements? I'm going to have um, a memorial service for Skip, my husband that died uh, recently, well, end of November. And it'll be on May 1st here at the church at one o'clock. And you're all invited. I'd love to see you. Uh, thank you very much for signing up for uh, fruit plates and desserts for Pam's ordination dinner. I think we have enough. And uh, next week, uh, Denise is going to be putting up another uh, sign up. Do you want to speak to that, Denise? Yes, and thank you all for signing up. And next will be uh, Easter brunch, Easter lunch after the service. And I will put up items for you to bring and share. Thanks. Other announcements? One quick one, a month from now, April 16th, is going to be the organ crawl. 
those of you who remember Bob Karsner know how dear it was to him, but come here five different pipe organs here in the Dow. It's an amazing number for a town this size. It'll begin at two o'clock at Old St. Peter's and April 16th. Uh, so as was mentioned, uh, the Bishop will be here this coming weekend, uh, starting Friday. Uh, Saturday evening, um, Vestry uh, and Jonathan, Pam, and uh, the treasurer will be sitting down uh, in the commons room with the bishop uh, for a light dinner uh, for probably 60 to 90 minutes. Thank you. A little bit of announcement, a little bit of Thanksgiving. Um, for those of you that may have noticed last Friday, there were plenty of uh, local law enforcement here at the church. And I want to thank Jonathan and the vestry for allowing us a safe environment to do some training downstairs uh, that was relevant uh, to a lot of the things that are going on in our communities. And I appreciate uh, the, the use of Taylor Hall and its uh, complex downstairs uh, as, the, as the law enforcement found out. And that we will also be doing this again on April 28th um, throughout the day. So thank you, Jonathan. Other announcements? Thanksgiving. Pat and I were down to a wake on uh, Friday night for a gentleman by the name of Larry Cassidy. Uh, most of us probably don't know him, but he was a very popular businessman in Vancouver, Washington, on the Fish and Wildlife Commission as chairman and was on the Northwest Power Planning Council, uh, appointed by governors of both states. Uh, he passed away after a fight with uh, prostate cancer and was laid to rest on Friday. And we thank God for his life. He was a good friend. Well, I wanted to give thanks for a couple things, too. One is Mark and I attended the state gymnastic competition yesterday in Hillsboro. They have a beautiful facility there but many of you may know Lydia my granddaughter well she competed and she got a third on the vault she expected to get nothing by the way <laughs> it, it's quite the competition we had fun watching it so and the other thing is really a a, a concern and a challenge for this uh parish uh it's a heads up that you may know from reading the newspaper that, that the um that the Oregon Motel is being refur refurbished for houseless people to and made into smaller apartments. And there's been a huge coalition of people involved in this process. And so there, there's always a bit of pushback to change, isn't there? We talked a little bit about that in a forum this morning, that change is hard. And so people have some doubts about the location of having the houseless at the Oregon Motel. But I would encourage you, if you have not read the articles in the newspaper or to talk, to talk to other people with more information, to please be on board with this. This is a very, very positive thing for our community. And we, as a group of people who expound, we say we love our neighbor. Well, guess what? These people are our neighbor. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Also, thank you for clarifying that it was Lydia before you did. I was asking, was it Mark competing you or just other Thanksgivings? My youngest son, Josh, uh, works in the restaurant business, and it's a kind of a I don't know what I want to say, volatile situation. People go and come and such. And he's been at uh, the Normandy in Portland um, uh, for about three years and has only been getting a couple shifts because of they were onboarding others. And I praise the Lord that he was just recently hired at El Gacho in the Benson Hotel. 
so I can hardly wait to dine there. He gets 50% off for family. It's the only way I could afford it. <laughs> Other Thanksgivings. My oldest granddaughter will be 22 this next week. My middle granddaughter was on a basketball team that took second in, in the state of Montana. And my youngest granddaughter was in a volleyball tournament yesterday that they won. And bless their hearts, they did not get any of that from their grandma, but they're wonderful. Other Thanksgivings. Any other announcements in general? Okay. Will you pray with me, Lord? God, thank you for the life of your church. And I just want to lift up and say thank you for Pam. Be with her in this time of transition. Ordination is a sacrament as it's been understood by our church. It is an act of grace that is visible to others. Let her ordination and her life continue to be sacramental to you and thank you for the all she's given and all that she can be thank you for this time lord be with her in her ordination let it be a blessing to her and to the community the church and the world thank you for all the things going on in our church god and be with us in the scary parts too be with all those going into surgery and with medical uncertainty in particular we want to lift up the scarborough family but you're also with us in moments of joy and happiness Thank you for all the things that tournaments of grandchildren, events, fun things that we can participate in, the simple joys of competing and expressing our bodies in athleticism. Thank you for all the positive things going on in our world, God, and in our community. We know you are with us in the times of darkness, and we know you are with us in the time of light. As we heard preached on today, be with us with our eyes for how we can see, see both the light and the darkness, and seek after you. Lord, let us also be supportive of the initiatives in our community with this hotel, that we may be supportive and that we may help care for some of the most vulnerable people literally among us. Be with us as a community, God. Be with us as a church. And thank you for being our God. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever I drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Miriam, Ruth, and Mary, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only, and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. But the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, 
through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the Body of Christ, the The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in his holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work us. Allow and serve you to be this faithful witness of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Hey, John, I have my I have my iPad with me. Um, if you want to stay online, you can stay for coffee hour, and I can pass my iPad around and you can talk to people. Um, just a minute. Hang on. Uh, hang on, just a Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.